Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. What a, what a blessing having salvation is. Let me say that again. What a blessing having salvation is. I mean, we ought to all be excited about that. Um, Doug and I were having a conversation a minute ago about tradition. I guess that's what we were talking about. Um, it made me think about how I grew up and where I grew up. I grew up in a very uh, conservative Baptist church. Well, I don't know what I did. I did something wrong. I just brought up a... And in that conservative Baptist church, tradition was pretty strong. We didn't... Uh, we didn't get to sing off choruses like this. We sang out of a hymnal. I told Doug it's been so long since I've seen a hymnal I don't even know, remember what they look like. But it made me think as we were talking about that, one of the traditions that we had was when it was time for the message, uh, everybody stood up and sang the doxology. How many of you grew up like that? There's some things about tradition, and I, I love the song that we, we ended with. Thank you, Lori. Um, and I know Lori listens to the Holy Spirit about these things, and, and we don't just sing something just because we sing it. We have a Spirit-led worship time, which also means that everything that we do in life should be spirit-led. Everything we do, every breath we take, every time we move to do something, shouldn't just be a habit that we've got into. Um, in my own life, um, I've thought about this over... A, and, and I reflect more on the last 30 years that Kathleen and I have been uh, married and traveling and doing this than I do the, the years before that. Um, and some of the things we've done has got away from tradition. Because sometimes we get steeped in tradition and it just becomes a habit. Um... I could say that, uh, you know, there's a period of time I quit traveling for a while and one day the Lord told me, he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm staying home and building the church. And he said, who told you to do that? And I think about this so, so that, uh, and, and I've talked recently about uh, thank you for understanding because I'm doing what the Lord's told me to do. But I've traveled in different circles. Uh, over the last 
uh, in November uh, last year, it was 46 years. And I've traveled over different circles the whole time. Um, there are particular church services that I've done for many, many years. Um, this was uh, 32 years at, at National, Fi National Finals Rodeo this year. But that doesn't mean that's always going to be the place I go. Because we've got to hear what God has to say about everything we do in our life. We don't continue in the same job just because we've been there and it gives us a check. We're, we're, we're looking for something all the time that could be better. Is that right? Or easier. Or makes me feel better. You know, sometimes the way we feel has a big bearing on, on what we do. If you don't like what you're doing, you need to find something else to do what you're what you like doing. Um, I've had many jobs over the years along with being in the ministry. This is what the doxology was if you don't didn't grow up someplace that they did that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And that should be our thought each and every day. And you know, and this had nothing to do with the message this morning. It had to do with my reflecting on things that we do and, and why we do them. Um, for instance, it literally makes no sense for me to travel in the circles that I'm traveling right now. Uh, nothing is uh, west of Mississippi. Uh, it goes as far north as Ohio and as far south as the, the bottom of Florida. Um, Literally, there's the same kind of events right here in Texas that I could be at. But that's not what the Lord told me to do. The Lord told me to do everything that, that John Johnson's doing. And again, that makes no sense. But at the same time, we look at the people's lives that we touch. This is, a, this is what I want you to do. Think about what you do each and every day. Whose lives do you touch? And whose lives can you negatively touch? And who can you touch positively for the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that's what we do. We do one or two of the, the, those, one or the other of those things. We either touch people's lives and reflect Jesus Christ into their life, or we touch them negatively. And our goal every day should be to reflect the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your Bibles and turn to uh, Matthew chapter, or excuse me, Mark chapter 11. Most of the, the this first part will be very familiar to you. I've been excited because the Lord had this message for me to bring that we've, most of us have heard before. And so it's not a new revelation, but it's something we can't move away from in whatever we do. Mark eleven twenty two. And Zane, this first part I'll be in, in the New King James. Now, where Jesus was at this time, if you're not familiar with this account, was uh, the day before, him and his disciples had come along and he had cursed the fig tree. It actually says in the Bible that there were no figs on the tree because it wasn't the time for figs. So part of this, I don't understand, but I do understand that it was an example to the disciples at what they the power that they had in their mouth they came by peter says look master 
the tree has withered at the roots. In other words, the tree's about to fall over because it's dead. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, verse 22. Have faith in God. Now, we don't have the Worrell's translation, do we? Zane? I don't think we have the Worrell's. Worrell's says it this way. Worrell's does some things that give a more literal translation. Uh, the literal translation, I believe, said the same thing. It doesn't just have faith in God. It says have the faith of God. Now, I want you to think about the faith of God. What did the faith of God do? Spoke the worlds into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, let there be darkness, and there was darkness. Let there be land in the middle of the sea. And there was land in the middle of the sea that parted the waters, it says. We realize that he literally spoke the world into existence. And so when he created man, what did he do? He spoke man into existence. For assuredly I say to you. Now this is the part that we have a hard time with. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever, whatever he says. Now, the reason we have a hard time with that is because who says to a mountain, move? He was standing on the Mount of Olives when he gave that example. That's where the fig tree was on the Mount of Olives. He would, they, they were on the way to Bethany, and the way from Jerusalem to Bethany is right over the top of the Mount of Olives. And so when he was on that mountain, he used that example. But you, I want you to think about this. Whoever says to this sick, sickness, be removed and cast into the sea, it'll be done because he says, it th says three times in there, because whatever he says, he said, it'll happen. We realize that, that what I say has the power to move whatever it is, whether it's sickness, whether it's whatever we can think of that lines up with the Word of God. <clears throat> this is a confidence that I have in Him, that if I ask anything according to His will, that He hears me, and the things that I ask, I'll have them because He hears me. What's His will? We read from the front to the back of the Bible what His will is, and, and any of those things, sickness, uh, worry, they're, they're all covered in the Word. He was chastised for my peace. That means I don't have any reason to worry. And why, why would I do something that goes against what he did for me? By his stripes I was healed. Does that mean that there's not going to be any sickness? No, it doesn't. We live in a world where we have all kinds of germs around us. Uh, last Friday night I ate the wrong thing. And I don't know, I, I, today I don't know what it was. And, and I was, I, you know, I wasn't in church last Sunday. And the reason I wasn't in church, because I didn't feel good. And whatever it was, I, I have an idea what it was. And literally, I've watched a couple of people eat it this week. And I thought, not me. I'm not going there. <clears throat> and just in case you eat it, I'm not going to tell you what it was. Uh, because that d doesn't mean it was bad. It means that, that it didn't work for me. Therefore, I say to you, this is verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. Believe that you receive them and you'll have them. What things do you ask for? Just things you need? Things you want? Things you desire, all of those things are covered. Just because I ask and believe. Turn to chapter 16 of Proverbs. I'm going to read this out of the, out of the Amplified Zane. Chapter 16. 
Somebody say, I'm here. Proverbs 16.1 says, The plans of the mind and orderly thinking belong to man. What you think about and what you plan to do belongs to you. That's what he says. But the wise answer, but the Lord from, but from the Lord comes the wise answer of the tongue. Now, in the New King James and the King James, it just says, uh, from, but from the Lord comes the answer of the tongue. Anything in brackets is the meaning. Anything in parentheses is a prophecy in Amplified. So the meaning of the answer of the tongue is the wise answer of the tongue. So the things that I plan to do, if I'm going to be wise about it, I'm going to make a plan that lines up with what God says. Is that right? Thank you for your excitement. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay. I preach better when you talk to me, okay? All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirits, parentheses, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What are the thoughts and the intents of your heart? Are they pure? Do you just want to make a, a, a statement that is pure? If we're looking at the Word, then what we plan to do lines up with God's Word, and then it is pure. If we're being led by the Spirit. So... Doug, I didn't know I was going to really talk about this during church. We were uh, we were discussing tradition and spirit led. Is it better to be steeped in tradition? Hey, there's nothing the matter with some traditions. Or is it better to be led by the Spirit of God? When we're led by the Spirit of the God, then we won't deviate from the direction that the Word wants us to go because the Spirit of God won't lead us in the wrong direction. I'll give you a for instance. I've repeated this before, but it's been a long time. We had a guy come to church one time. He came up to me and he told me, he says, the Lord told me to leave my wife, that it was my time. And I looked at him and I said, that wasn't the Lord, that was just your carnal desires. And that was the truth. And he left his wife. And to my knowledge, he's never been in church again. Was that spirit led to do that? No, because it doesn't line up with the Word of God. So that's kind of a, a way out there example. But think about the things that you do every day. Do they line up with the Word? Or do they go against what the Word says? Some things we do every day don't necessarily have to line up with the Word. But they can't go against what the Word says. So the Spirit won't lead me into a job that's going to do things that has nothing to do with what God believes that I should be. Is that right? He won't tell me to do things that go against what God's Word says. But instead, I'll do the things that the Word says I'm supposed to do. And so, when I make a plan to do something, and the wise answer of the tongue comes from the heart, but the thought, Lord weighs the thoughts and the intents of my heart, or is my heart to follow Him or go against Him? Is my heart... To follow Him or do what I want to do just because I want to do it?
Roll your works upon the Lord. Brackets, because it's, this is what it means. Commit and trust them wholly to Him. And He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to His will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. So if I do things that line up with His Word, that will, hey, providing for my family, is that part of His Word? You bet. It says a man that doesn't work doesn't eat. So it's not okay for me to sit home. One time I, I talked about how God will uh, provide for us, and a guy's mother went home and, uh, because she came to church there too. And she went home and quit her job because the Lord's going to provide for me. No, that wasn't what I said. And so he called me, and he said, Hey, my mom quit her job. I'm afraid she's going to not be able to keep her house, because she has no way to pay her rent. Well, pretty soon she was sitting in the dark, because she didn't have any electricity because when you don't pay your electricity bill, they don't continue to keep your house hooked up. And she figured out she wasn't really supposed to quit her job. She was just supposed to realize that God furnished that job for her. Hey, if you don't like what you're doing, God will give you another job. I'm confident of that. Proverbs chapter 17 we're going to go back to the New King James Zane. Verse 27 and 28. He who has knowledge spares his word. And a man of understanding is a calm spirit. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace, when he shuts his lips, he's considered perceptive. Don't talk about things that you don't understand. Don't talk about things that you don't know. Don't say, this is the way it should be until we seek God and see if that's the way it should be. <clears throat> I want to skip over to uh, chapter 18, verse 1. And the only reason we're going to read part of this is realizing that these are things that we should not do. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desires. He raises against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. When the wicked comes, contempt comes also. With dishonor comes reproach. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. And the wellspring of Wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked, nor, nor to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is destruction. His lips are a snare of his soul. I know we don't, we don't do any of this stuff, okay? But what we have to remember is who are you listening to? Who do you let speak into your life? Do you let somebody that's spirit-led speak into your life? Or do you just let anybody speak into your life? Some of them fall in this category. The words of a tale-bearer. A gossiper. And I know we don't have any of those, right? But do we listen to it? 
are like tasty truffles, trifles, and they go down into the innermost body. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are safe. Down to the 18th verse. Excuse me, the 15th verse and 16th. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear, ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Your gift will make room for you. Whatever the gift that God has given you is will make room for you wherever you're at. Whatever you're doing. You're not just there because you happen to be there. Just because it happened to be a, a good thing to do. If you're in a place that you have looking for the right word um influence on different people that as you realize the influence that you have do you have a positive influence for Jesus Christ are you wise in the things that you do it's important how much we speak into somebody's life when we don't have any business doing it or listening to the people that don't have any business trying to speak into our life. I've told you the, the account of the guy that came to me and he said, uh, Did you read the, the last verse of Jeremiah 18? He said, This is what it says. He says, I'll drink and party and have a good time. I read it. He was right. Said exactly what he said. It what said. But the verse before it said, only a fool says. I said, did you read the verse before it? He said, yeah, but I don't talk about that one. <laughs> well, okay, we, we chuckle at that. I chuckled at it too. Because I knew he was ignorant. And he decided to come and tell the preacher why he did what he did. He said, well, you know, I'm Catholic and we do that anyway. The Catholics I know didn't do that. Okay? Didn't live that just because they want, wanted to live a certain way, live that way. The reason I shared that right now, because I'm about to go back to Jacksonville, Florida. And last year at Jacksonville, Florida, in front of a lot of Christian people, I got him in a conversation. I finally decided I'd go to him and ask him. I said, I realize you're Catholic, but there's only one question you need to answer. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because I don't care what else you've done. Or what else you do. I said it's not okay just to do whatever we want to do. I believe that that's what the Bible tells us. To live for God. But if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you're going to be okay. And the rest of that you just need to give to him. And he looked at me and said very loudly. In front of a lot of Christian people. Who actually turned away and walked away because they didn't know how I stood there and listened to it. I was concerned about what his eternal destination was in life. And he told me this. A good God would never send anybody to hell. I don't have to do that. No, a good God gave us an answer. And his name was Jesus. And that's exactly what I told him. And he turned and walked away. I've literally not seen him the rest of the year. That doesn't mean he's disappeared. 
It may mean that he doesn't come see me anymore. But he knows the truth. So what are you going to do when somebody talks exactly against what the Word of God says? Are you going to keep your mouth shut? Or are you going to say, hey, <laughs> it's not what the Bible says? And I told him, I said, that's not what a good God does. A good God made provision for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And to have an eternal destination of heaven. And he gave everybody that choice. Not just you. Everybody in the whole world that's ever lived since Jesus died on the cross has had that opportunity. He turned and walked away. He made his choice. Do I think possibly he's made a different choice now? I hope so. I hope he does before it's too late. I did ask about him the other day because nobody had seen him. I don't know. It's not my problem. My problem was making sure that the things that I said lined up with the Word of God and I just didn't go, well, you can think what you want to think. Sometimes that can be the attitude that we have. Well, you can think what you want to think. Everybody uh, remembers Don Morton that used to come to church here before he passed away. I'll tell you how I met Don. Don's favorite subject was always grace. And Roddy Qualls and I were sitting at a table drinking coffee one day in Starbucks downtown. And Don went and told a guy what grace meant. Well, to me, the answer sounded like greasy grace. And I'm just going to say greasy grace isn't how you get saved. So being the person that I am, I said, I, I didn't know him. I'd seen him. Most of the things he said kind of rubbed me the wrong way when I'd hear him talking to other people. And I said to him, I said, uh, Sir, can I tell you what the Hebrew and the Greek meaning of grace is? And he said, Sure. And uh, I told him, and he looked at me, and he said, Well, you can think what you want to think. And turned around and walked away. And Roddy looked at me like, What are you going to say now? <clears throat> I didn't say anything. I've waited about, uh, it was probably a couple of weeks till uh, I had the opportunity. He happened to be standing behind me in line when I was getting my coffee. And I said, uh, what do you drink? He says, they know what I drink. They'll make it for me. I said, whatever he's getting, I'm paying for too. He goes, you can't do that. I said, I just did. And I turned around and walked away. He came and sat down at my table, and to the day he was dead, he never left my table. And that's how he started coming to church here. And I heard him tell a guy one day, he didn't think I could hear. He says, I'm up at the counter getting my coffee, and he's sitting in the corner. He tells a guy, he says, that's my pastor, and he knows the Greek and the Hebrew and what the geology in the world is and he talks about it every week. He was trying to get the guy to come to church. Now what I saw about that was, hey, I'm going to tell you, the guy rubbed me the wrong way all the time. Even after he sat at my table, sometimes I'd cringe. My father says, that guy's kind of abrasive. But then all of a sudden, my dad and him are sitting drinking coffee together every time my dad would go to town. He was no longer abrasive. They became friends. 
Steve, when, when uh, Don was alive, he didn't miss Sunday school. Much to Bud's dismay sometimes because he, he had a real strong opinion about everything. Yes, he did. But he loved God. And I would have never known that until if I hadn't turned the other way and decided I'm going to be bigger than he is. I'm going to do something that will rock his world just because I can. And when we get in that position, and I'm going to tell you... <clears throat> That wasn't something I wanted to do, buy his coffee. I got led by the Lord to buy his coffee that day. And when we listen to what God has to say, we'll like the outcome. The man was my friend. Chapter 18, verse 20 and 22. Or, excuse me, 20 through 22. I believe that this may be is a second important thing about our mouth. Only to what Jesus said. That whatsoever things you desire, open your mouth and say them. That's what he says. If you read that, and we'll read it one more time before we're done. Jesus basically said, whatever it is you, that you want, open your mouth and say it. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. I look like a guy that likes to eat. I want to be satisfied. By the fruit of my mouth. From the produce of his lips. Shall he be filled. Death and life. Are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it. Will eat its fruit. And of course. Our wives like this part. He who finds a wife. Finds a good thing. And obtains favor from the Lord. And the wives said, that's, tr that's the truth. And the husbands should say, that's the truth. I'm going to close by reading where we started again. Verse 22, or 23, 11, 23. For assuredly I say to you, whatever, whoever says anything that lines up with his wants, desires, or needs, that could be the mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. Kathleen will tell you that When I decided I wanted to, I didn't want a Harley. I wanted an Indian. Okay. I put a picture in our little bookcase in the bathroom in the, in the motor home of this Indian. And every time I walked by it, I said, Father, thank you for that motorcycle. And when I went to buy the Indian... The guy talked me into bu buying a, a Harley. They were a Harley dealer, go figure. Even though they had Indians too. And that's how I wound up with a Harley.
Because every time I walked by that, I said, Father, thank you for that Harley. Hey, I didn't have the money to buy that Harley when I started thanking him. Did I need the Harley? No, I wanted it. Did it become a ministry tool? Yes, it did. I still have it. Kathleen doesn't know if I need to keep it, but... I do have the place to haul it. This isn't about just having the things that you, you want. What do you need? What's going on in your life? Is sickness trying to attach to you? Financial hardship trying to attach to you? What's the Bible say? The Bible said He supplies all of our needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. All of our needs. Does that mean finances? Unfortunately, it takes finances to buy things that we need. Sometimes more than others. Food's got kind of outrageous lately. But he supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I promise you, nobody knows how bad fuel is uh, worse than toy, probably. But I'm about to head for Jacksonville, Florida, and I know what it's going to cost about for fuel. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. What is it that you want, need, or desire? Go to Him. Make sure the right things come out of your mouth. Agree with Him. If I'm going to ask Him, make sure I agree with Him. If I'm going to speak to the mountain, make sure I believe that when I open my mouth, I have the things that I say. I believe that with all my heart. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity that you give us to be able to speak into each other's lives and to listen to you. Make sure the words of our mouth line up with you in all things. Check us before we open our mouth, not after. Father, and I thank you for that. I praise you. I pray over each and every one here and those watching by internet that, Father, that you'll bless them and watch over them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that His plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the Word, we realize that the Word... Uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, 
uh, for any of you. And, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus and by his blood. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.